Rose. There worse than anything. It wasn't any excuse for his escaping. This sort of thing could have never happened if they listened to me. Oh, they'll catch him. Those big lights. But what good will that do society? It's time to catch them as well. They're still little kids. That's the whole basis of my crime prevention theory. It's all going to be written up in the papers soon. Oh, what? They print the papers? I've never seen anything like it. Has anything happened, Mr. Endicott? Endicott, calling. Give me right, man. No, this will be just the time for you to print my theory of crime prevention. Well, hurry it up. Now, here, I got the city split up in the districts. I got the mark the red. Well, for God's sake, can't you see I'm... Hello, Gil? But you've been promising me you'd take All right, I'll take it home and study it. Now, stop annoying me. I gotta work. I can't sit around listening to you. Now, get out of here. Stop bothering me. Ready, Gil? Here's the situation so far. He's gonna take it home and study it. Oh. Right, at seven minutes after nine, Williams is taken to the sheriff's private office to be examined by this Professor Egelhofer. And a few minutes later, he's shot his way out. No, nobody knows where he got the gun. Or if they do, they won't tell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he rode up eight flights of stairs to the infirmary, and he got out through the skylight. He must have sit down the rain pipe in the street. No, I tell you, nobody knows where he got it. I got hold of Toby, but he won't talk. Outside, Jenny, will you get outside? They're throwing a drag now around the whole north side. Watching the railroads and red headquarters. The chief of police has ordered out every copper on the post, and he says they'll get Williams before morning. Hello, sweetheart, give me the desk, will you? The crime commission is off to reward us $10,000 for a chapter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and get hold of Professor Agelhoff. He knows what's happened, and if I can find him, I'll call you back. Jenny, every time we turn our backs, you start that goddamn story. All right! Only it's dirty? I get scolded! This is where we talk. No clue yet as to Earl Williams' whereabouts. But here's a little feature, though. A tear ball, my dog. Yeah, tear ball. That's right. Criminal's cry for it. To hell with the man. He wants me. He knows where I am. But get this. This tear ball, my dog, unexpectedly in the hands of Sheriff Hartman's falling squad. What went off? Falling deputy sheriff's worst. Pass fall off. A fine fair weather friend you are. Well, what's going on? After all I've done for you. Kurt Wildstein. Putting stuff like that in the papers. Sidney Matsford. That's gratitude for you. And the coon. Ain't that terrible? Abel Lefkowitz, all those fellas. Give me a rewrite. I'll call you back. Ready? A man corresponding to Earl Williams' description was seen boarding a southbound Cottage Grove Avenue car by motorman Julius L. Roosevelt. Yeah, that's right. Roosevelt. I thought it would make a good feature on account of the name. McHugh talking, give me the desk. All right, I'll go after it. Hello, Emil. Pick anything up? No, nothing important. Oh, hello, Emil. Ready? Silence in the manhunt. This is Henrietta Schlogel, 55, scrub lady, was shot in the left leg while scrubbing the A4 of the Wrigley Building. Or I want a Sheriff Hartman's special deputy. There goes another scrub lady. No, just a flesh one. They took her to straight to Passivan Hospital. Any dope on how we got out? No. For all I can get, they were playing stoop tag. What about Jacoby? Did he say anything to you? Not a word. Say, listen. I got the whole story from Jacoby, and I got it exclusive. That's right, and it's a pip. Only listen, it cost me 260 bucks, see? Split it out, one you got. Just a minute, you'll get your story. I'm telling you first that I had to give him all the money I had on me. 260 bucks, and it wasn't exactly mine. Did you find out if the rest were behind the escape or not? Did you hear what I said about the money? You'll get your goddamn money. All right, then here's your story. It's the jailbreak of your dreams. Dr. Max J. Egelhofer, a profound thinker from Vienna, was giving Williams a final sanity test in the sheriff's office. You know, sticking a lot of pins in him to test his reflexes, that kind of thing. When he decided to reenact the crime exactly as it happened, in order to test Williams' powers of coordination. Take the mush out of your mouth, for God's sake. What happened? Well, I'm coming to it, goddammit. Will you shut up? Anyway, he had to have a gun to reenact with. And who do you suppose supplied it? Peter B. Hartman. B for brains. What are you doing, kid? I tell you, I ain't kidding. Hartman gave his gun to the professor. The professor gave it to Earl, and Earl shot the professor right in the belly. My God, that's wonderful. Ain't it perfect? If the sheriff had rolled out a red carpet and Long Williams an umbrella, it couldn't be more ideal. Is this Engelstein dead yet? Engelhofer. No, they whisked him off to the Passavon Hospital. Anybody got it? No, we got it exclusive. Now listen, Walter. It cost me 260 bucks for this story, and I had to give him before he could cough up his guts. $260. The money I'm getting married on. That's great. He'll be fine work. Never mind about the fine work. I want the money. All right. You'll get it back. Get back in the story. 
No, I ain't covering anything else for you. Now listen, you lousy stiff. I did this just as a personal favor. I gave Jacoby every cent I got, and I want it back. All right, all right. I'll send it over, you When will you send it over? Starting a boy right away. All right, tell him to run. Fifteen minutes. It's easy to do, or I can't get married. What was that in the telephone, my precious? Nothing. I was just telling Walter Burns I was all through. That's all. Hello, darling. Judy, you haven't done something foolish with that money. No! No. You still have the rest of it? Of course. Gee, darling, you don't think for a minute that I... I think that maybe I better take care of it from now on. Oh, sweetheart, I'm perfectly capable of looking after a couple of hundred dollars, all right? Hildy, if you still get that money, I want you to give it to me. Now, sweetheart, everything's going to be perfectly all right. Then you haven't got it. Not this minute. You did something No, with no. He's sending it over. Walter, I mean. It'll be here any minute. Oh, Hildy. Oh, no, sweetheart. I wouldn't have had this happen for the world, but it's going to be all right. Now, here's what happened. I was just starting out to the house to get you when this guy Williams breaks out of jail. You know, the fellow they're going to hang in the morning. Yes, I know. Oh, no, Peggy. I had to do what I did. And the same thing when it came to the money. Peggy, I probably shouldn't be telling you but do you know how this fella escaped? Well, he was down in the sheriff's office when Hartman, that's the sheriff, and Egelhofer, that's this fella from Vienna. Hildy. Oh, no, I can't tell you if you won't listen. I had to give him the money so he wouldn't give the story to anyone else. Jacoby, I mean, that's the assistant warden. I got the story exclusive. The biggest scoop in years, I'll bet. Do you know how long Mother and I waited out of the house? Oh, no, Peggy, you can't be mad at me for this. I couldn't help it. Biggest story in the world, Boston, and nobody on the job. I might have known it would happen again. Oh, listen. Any time I ever wanted you for something, like on my birthday, or on New Year's Eve, but I waited until five in the oh, morning. Oh, but a big story, bro. It's always a big story, the biggest story in the world, and the next morning, everybody's forgotten it, even you. What do you mean, forgotten it? That was the Clara Hammond murder. Uh, on your birthday, I mean. <laughs> now listen, Peggy, it won't hurt you to wait five more minutes. The boy's on his way with the money now. Mother's sitting downstairs in a taxi cab. I'm just ashamed to face her the way you've been acting. If she knew about that money. But we've got the world for you. We haven't even got oh, a sweetheart. I wouldn't do anything in the world to hurt you. You make me feel like a criminal. It's all that Walter Burns. Oh, I'll be so glad when I get you away from him. You said we can't resist him. I, I've told you what I think of him. I wouldn't raise a finger if he was dying. Honest to God. Why did you loan him the money? I didn't. You see, you won't listen. Oh, you know I didn't. Now, I gave the money to Jacoby, the assistant warden. Uh, here they are, ma'am. Oh, uh, hello, Mrs. Grant. Mother. I was just explaining to Peggy. Well, I just came up to tell you that the meter's gone to two dollars. Mother, I thought you were going to wait in the taxi cab. I had a terrible time finding you. First, I went into a room with a, a lot of policemen playing cards. Yeah, yeah. Then I met that policeman and asked him where Mr. Johnson's office was. Mother, why don't you go away from the stairs? Tell him I will be down in a minute. You've got a big room, haven't you? Where do you sit? Ah, uh, now I'll tell you what to do. You go down to the station and get the baggage checked. Now, here are the tickets. Now, he'll be. I'll be along in 15 minutes, maybe sooner. How do you mean? You aren't going? Of course I am. Ah, uh, now I'll meet you at the information booth. Come on, Mother. Toby has to wait here for a few minutes. Something to do with the office. He's getting some money. Money? Yeah. They're sending over... It's my salary. They're sending over my salary. Your salary? At this hour? Yeah. They were awful busy. Do you know what I'm going to think? What? I think you must be a sort of irresponsible type, or you wouldn't do things this way. Now you stop picking a mic, Hildy, Mother. And here you are, standing here with the train leaving any minute. Oh, now, Mother, I never missed a train in my life. Now, you run along with Peggy. Oh, but you're talking. Oh, come on, Mother. We're disturbing people. Oh, uh, this is my girl, Mac, and her mother, Mr. McHugh. Oh, uh, pleased to meet you. Here's a howl as well featured on the manhouse. Oh, excuse my French. Was it Vivian Wolf? Eddie took some one and a half South State Street, colored day for two, picking a leaf with whole wet. Listen, Mother, you better run along. I'll put my suitcase in the cab. Oh, come along, Mother. With Sheriff Harper's special rifle squad acting as midwives. Mercy! You ought to have seen him, ma'am. The creepy was walking down the street when all of a sudden she began having labor pains. No labor pains. Didn't you ever have labor pains? 
Right up. She was hollering for her husband who's been missing for five months when the police seen her. A deputy, Henry Sherrison, who's a married man, recognized what her condition was. So he coaxed her into the patrol wagon. They started a race with the store for Pants on Hospital. If a boy comes in here looking for me, grab him. I'll be right back. Listen, when the picketing was born, the rifle squad examined him very carefully to see if it was Earl Williams, who they knew was a hiding somewhere. They named him Peter Harmon DeWolf, in honor of the sheriff, and they all chipped in a dollar apiece in account of it being the first baby ever born on a manhunt. Wait a minute, here's the mayor himself. Maybe there's a statement. Don't pester me now, please. I got a lot on my mind. The mayor won't say anything. Do you see Sheriff Parkman? Been in and out all night, Your Honor. Now listen, Your Honor, we got him, Steve. We're going to press in 20 minutes. Can't talk about boys. I got nothing to say. Not at this time. What do you mean, not this time? Who do you think you are? Come on, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. What do you know about the escape? How'd he get out? Where'd he get Where the gun? Where are boys? Not so fast. Well, give us a statement on the election, then. Is there any truth in that report that you're on Stanley's payroll? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind the jokes. Don't forget that I'm the mayor of this town and that the dignity of my office. Hello, Hartman. I've been looking for you. What's this about somebody getting shot? Where'd he get the gun? Uh, just a minute, fellas. Uh, just a minute, I tell you. We got him located. Where? Well, out to a place where we used to live on Clark Street. Just got the tip. Oh, why did you say so? Uh, the rifle squad's just going out. Well, where are they? Uh, downstairs, all the boys are weapons. Oh, God. I'll report to me, Charlie, the minute you get there. I'll be in the building. Pete. I want to talk to you. Uh, I ain't got time, Fred. Honest, I'll see you later. Pete. There's one thing I've got to know. Did you yourself actually give Williams that gun? Uh, the professor asked me for it. I didn't know what he wanted it for. I thought it was for something scientific. I couldn't believe it. I can't believe it. Your own gun loaded, now too. Listen, Fred. Oh. Hello, Your Honor. Any statement on the Red Uprising tomorrow? What Red Uprising? There'll be no Red Uprising. But the Senator claims the situation calls for the militia. If you can quote me saying anything the Senator says, it's a tissue of lies. Kruger, call and give me the test. Hey, why aren't you with the rifle squad that just gone out? Got a man with him. Oh. Here's a red-out statement from the Senator. The Senator claims that the City Hall is another OGN stables. OGN. Oh, for God's sake, he don't know what O'Gian means. Senator doesn't know either. <laughs> Do you? Take the rest anyhow. The sheriff, the, the senator claims that the mayor and the sheriff have shown themselves to be a couple of eight-year-olds playing with fire. Then, this is the statement. It is a lucky thing for the city that next Tuesday is election day, as the citizens will thus be saved the expense of impeaching the mayor and the sheriff. That's all. Call you back. How's it going, Your Honor? Got a mighty unpleasant test to perform. <laughs> now listen, Fred, you're just gonna get me rattled. Two years ago, we almost lost the college boat in the count of that coon story you told at Dixie Marching Club. Man in the traveling salesman. Yeah, but why harp on that now? Now you come along with another one of your moron blunders. The worst of your whole career. Ah, uh, stop worrying, will you, Fred? Just do me a favor and stop worrying. I'm doing everything on God's green earth. I've just sworn in 400 deputies. 400? You want to bank up this administration? But I'm only paying in twelve dollars a night for Twelve dollars? Those goddamn mongers of yours? You're a friend of my brother-in-law. He worked for the city fifteen years! I know. Getting up big tag days? You're through. What do you mean, through? I mean, I'm scratching your name for taking a choose. You're willing to nick in your place. It's nothing personal, Pete. It's the only way out. It's a sacrifice we all ought to be happy to make. Fred? Now, Pete. Don't appeal to my sentimental side. Fred, I don't know what to say. A thing like this almost destroys a man's faith in human nature. I wish you wouldn't talk like that. Our families, Fred. I've always looked on Bessie as my own sister. If, if there was any way out, there is a way out. I got this way to shop around and have my... What more do you want? Now, you just give me a couple of hours. Hello? 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 400 suppers. Nothing doing. This is a manhunt, not a banquet. The twelve dollars includes everything. Well, the hell with him. Earl Williams ain't neat, is he? That gives you some idea of what I'm up against. We're up against a lot more than that nice slogan you invented. Reforming the Reds with a rope, 
Now, the enemy goddamn reds and you know it. Yeah, but why go into that now? Well, so I had this only to win. Pete King George out of Chicago. I ain't had a bite to eat since this thing happened. Pete, 200,000 pounds boats are state. We gotta hang our wings and get him. Yeah, but we're gonna hang him, Fred. He can't get away. What do you mean he can't get away? He got away, didn't he? Now look here, Pete. Oh, who's out there? Uh, that'll be for me. I'm Sheriff Hartman. Do you all right? Yes, sir. I've been looking all over for you. Huh? You're certainly a hard fellow. Oh, what do you want? From the governor. What's your governor? Huh? For a free for a William. For who? For a William. It's a mistake. There must be a mistake. The governor gave his word of honor he wouldn't interfere two days ago. And you fell for it. Holy God. It rises like to do to you sometimes. Oh. Wait a minute. Here you Who else knows about this? They were all standing around when he wrote it. It was after they got that suspicion. Get the governor on the phone, Hartman. Oh, they ain't got him, so They're duck shooting now. A lot of goddamn Nimrods. Can you beat that? Read it. Insane, he says. He knows that well, or Williams ain't insane. Yeah, I ain't gonna... This repeat is pure politics. It's a tent to ruin us, and you know it. You mentioned Fred Kirks? My God. We gotta think fast before those loud reporters get a hold of it. What do we tell them? What do we tell them? You can tell him your goddamn nails are out there, Shemini, and see for the hell of it. Watch out, Fred. You're just excited. We ain't gonna get any place. And you can tell him the Republican Party is suing the state on account of you. Just wait, Fred. Hello? What? Where? Oh, my God. What is it? Uh, wait a minute. Hold the wire. They got our Williams surrounded. The, the rifle squad had. And his house. Tell him to hold the wire. I did. Hold the wire. Cover up that transmitter. Never a right to this thing. Whatever it is. Get that? Yes, I did. <laughs> Wait a minute. How much do you make a week? How much do you make a week? What's your salary? Oh, forty dollars. No, don't cut me off. Would you like to earn $350 a month? That's almost $100 a week. Who? Me? Who the hell do you think? Now listen, there's a final thing for a fellow like you in the city sealer's office. What? In the city sealer's office. You be here? In Chicago? Yes! Yes! Well, wait a minute, will you? I'm in conference. I couldn't do that. Why not? I couldn't work in Chicago. You see, got my family in Springfield. But you could bring him to Chicago. Meal, pay all your expenses. No, I don't think so. Why not? I got two kids going to high school there. If I move them from one town to another, they'd probably lose a grade. No, they wouldn't. Game one, and I guarantee the Del Gretchen, tight honors. Yeah? Yeah. So now, what do you say? What did you say this job was? In the city sealer's office. Well, what did he do? Ah, uh, he has charge of all the important documents. He puts the city seals on them. That's about the power of the rest of your knowledge. It's his duty ground and see that the citizens of Chicago are not victimized by unscrupulous butchers and grocers. That's what I meant. It's his duty to go around and test their scales. Yeah. They're only twice a year. Well, I don't know. This puts me in a hell of a hole. No, it doesn't. Now remember, never a ride to this. You've been caught in traffic or something. Now get out of here! Don't let anyone see you! Yeah, but how do I know these are? Come in and see me in the office tomorrow. What did you say your name was? Pinkus. All 
All right, Mr. Pincus. All you got to do is lay low and keep your mouth shut. Here, go to this address. It's a nice homey little place, and you can get anything you want. Hold your horse, for God's sake. I'll tell you in a minute. Just don't break in. All right. Tell him, shoot the kill. What? Shoot the kill, I said. Oh, I, I don't know, Fred. There's that reprieve. Nobody reprieve that policeman. Now do as he tell. Now do as I tell you. Hello, metal bomb. Shoot to kill. That's the orders. Uh, pass along. No, we don't want him. Oh, and that metal bomb. Five hundred bucks for the guy that does the job. Yeah, I'll be right out there. I hope that's the right thing to do, Fred. Hey, what's in there? Take the guilty look off your face. You're trembling like a horse. Oh, it's you two. Hello, Hilde. Well, what's the idea of locking the door? Playing post office? Come on, Hartman. Was there a fella in here looking for me? Uh, did you hear? We got our way surrounded. I heard you only let him out so he could vote for you on Tuesday. Hartman! <laughs> Give me Walter Burns. Hello. Duffy? Duffy, this is Hildy. Where's Walter? Well, where did he go? Look, I'm waiting here for the boy to bring me over my money. The 260 bucks he owes me. Yeah, here in the press room. Listen, Walter said he started a boy over. What the hell are you laughing at? Dude, will that maniac start the money over or not? No, I ain't got time to come over to the office. The double-crossing louse. The trouble is, Mr. Johnston, nobody's using the right kind of psychologist. Now, you take this aspect of the situation. You got a man named Earl Williams who's escaped. Have you got $260 on you? What? Have you got $260? No, but I know how we can get $10,000 if you'll just listen. Sir Shay Lafayette. What? Who is it that's been defending this fella right along? Who is it that was hanging around this room just before the escape happened? I ain't got time for this wooden shoes. I gotta get $260 in the next five minutes. It's gonna take longer than five minutes. I know where Earl Williams is. He's out at Clark Street getting his head blown off. That don't get me any money. Earl Williams is with that girl, Molly Malloy. That's where he is. Can you imagine? This time tomorrow, I'd have been a gentleman. Oh, here you are. Oh, thank God. Have you got the dough? What? She sent them a lot of roses. Never mind she? your damn roses. Come on, Louie, give me the dough. I'm in a hell of a hurry. What are you talking oh, about? right. Aw, oh, do you mean to say Walter didn't give you the dough he owes me? Oh, no, but that's all sorted, Louie. Everything's all right. Gee, Hildy, I don't know. He wants me to go. Listen, Louie, you always got a lot of money. Can you help me out? This 260 bucks. Walter's sending a boy over with it. Now, I got a train ticket. What 260 get. bucks? The money I spent on the story. Now, Walter's sending a boy over with it. But I want you to take that and give me the money now. Oh, you want $260 from me? Now? Yes. Well, that's a hell of a lot of money, you know what I mean? Oh, no, but you can get it from Walter. I'll give you my IOU. Listen, Hildy, I'd like to help you out. But I've been stuck in so many IOUs lately, I may It ain't an IOU. It's money coming to me from the paper. Well, what do you got to show for it? Listen, Louie, my entire future is dependent on this. My girl's waiting at the train. I got 15 minutes to get to her. If you help me out, I swear. $260. That's a big gamble. It ain't a gamble at all. I'll write a note to Walter saying for him to give you the money he owes me. Well, I tell you what I'll do. I'll take a chance. Oh, that's swell, Louis. You're a white man, a real white man. I knew I could depend on you. I tell you what I'll do. I will give you $150 for the debt. But that's taking advantage, Louis. Well, that's the best I can do. Why, I lose almost 100 bucks by that. All right, have it your own way. Uh, make it 200 150 All right, give me the dough. Put down the gun. 
Oh, it ain't loaded. Fired all the bullets already. Holy God Almighty. You just couldn't hang off that roof any longer. Holy God, get away from the window. I'm not afraid to die. I was telling the fella that when he handed me the gun. Shut up a second. Waking me up in the middle of the night, sticking friends in me, calling me a Bolshevik. I am Bolshevik, I'm an anarchist. Be quiet. The hell with that. Shut up, will you? Oh, go on. Take me back and hang me. I done my best. Come on. Give me Walter Burns, quick. Hello? Oh, hello, Peggy. Listen, for God's sake, have a heart, will you? I'm in a hell of a jam. Walter Hildy. Sending a boy right away. Keep your shirt the on. The hell with that. Listen, come over here. Come over right away. Wait a minute. What the hell's the matter with you now? Peggy, quit falling out of me, will you? Something terrific's happened. Hurry up. Get this. I only want to say it once. I got Earl Williams. What? You caught him? Yeah. Moses H. Sebastian God, where? Here in the press room. You goddamn liar. Honest to God. You got him stuck away? Yeah, but for God's sake, hurry. I need you. Keep him sold up for ten minutes. I will. Listen, sweetheart, this is the biggest thing that ever happened. No, 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 don't stop crying. Wait till I tell you. I just captured Earl Williams. Earl Williams, the murderer. I caught him. No, no, don't tell anybody. No, I can't. I can't now, for God's sake. Don't you realize? Oh, oh, Peggy? Oh, who is it? Oh, wait a minute. What do you want? Where are they gone? You know where they are. Get out of here, Molly. Oh, but they got us so badly. They're going to shoot them like a dog. They're after you, too. If you're smart, you'll get out of oh, here. Oh, for God's sake, Hildy. Tell me where they're gone. I'm afraid of them yelling murderers. They're out of Clark Street, Clark and Bullock, and that's where, where? they are. Where? Where? Oh, God! Oh, what do you want, wooden shoes? I got some important information for you. A clue. I'll be right with you. I'm making a personal call. Get him back in there. What is this, a double cross, you leave? God damn it, I'm trying to save him. Very important. How did you get here? Keep him quiet. It's a cop. I'll get rid of him. Shh. Oh, wooden shoes, what's on your mind? How did you get here? Who knows? He came down the train pipe. I didn't mean to shoot him. I don't know what happened. But you can't stay here. They'll get you. I don't care anymore. Oh, you can hide. You can hide somewhere. No, no, I don't care. It's better to die for a cause than the way most people die. You won't die. They'll never get you. I ain't important. It's humanity that's important, like I told you. Humanity's a wonderful thing, Molly. No, it ain't. They're just dirty murderers. Look what they've done to you and me. That's because they don't know any better. No, you're too good for them. That's Get him back in there. The fellas are coming down the hall. Oh, they're gonna find him in here. Well, there ain't any place else. Shh. Don't lock the door. Coming right away, Mike. I'll be right with you. Well, hurry Get up. him back in there. Oh, my God. Go, please. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Go in there. What good will it do? We'll get you out in ten minutes. Oh, Mr. Hamilton, the Earl, and shot him right in the pants. 
Please he always had leather in his pants. The kid's talking. Give me the desk. Yeah, I'm out with Hartman's deputies. I'm in a drugstore, Clark and Fullerton. Well, call me back if you don't believe me. That's so. I'll well, check on it. There's something doing at Harrison's Street Station. Give me Harrison, 2500. Will you please? Say, Molly, what's the idea? Can't you flop somewhere else? Yeah. Parking her fanny in here like was her house. There the fancy she's got on. Ruff, ruff. Go on, Molly. Put it somewhere else. Go out and stink on Clark. Cause you and that awful. Look out, she'll start bawling again. I'll hold the Molly. Don't let her alone, fellas. She ain't doing anything. And what are you two so chummy about her? Yeah, they were locked in here together and he came along. Wouldn't open the door. Yeah, we had a train and bring a honeymoon thing. Peter go with this baby. I thought you had a train to catch. That's right. You was running around here a few minutes ago with his pants on fire while I've gone to New York. Told us he was interviewing her. Interview? What are you trying to do? Scoop us? I'm waiting here for Walter. He's coming over with some dough. Oh, Sarge McHugh, he got a tip on Williams. Look, she got the snakes. You make a face as a bug. Oh, she's jealous because Hilly's going to be married. Come on, relax. Show me the smile You lay off of me, all of you. Jealous. Hello, fellas. What the hell, Hilly? You still here? Yeah, I'm trying to hang something on us if you ask me. Come on, Hilly, give us a low down. Hey, go pull the sheets down. Hey, this looks good. An old lady just comes up to the detective bureau and claims Williams is hiding under her piazza. Who you got there? The captain. Let me talk to him. Hello? Turkey? How's your guzzy Molly doing? I hear you're hiding this guy Williams in your mustache. Yeah? Well, get your nose out of the way. Ooh, look it. Pikes pink. Listen, fellas, that sounds like a pretty good tip. What do you say? If you boys want to go out, I'll cover this end for well, you. Oh, the hell we're chasing around already. I spent a dollar forty on taxis this morning already. Yeah, let's not do any more going out, okay? If you ask me, I got a hunch this guy Williams in anywhere that can look for. Well, how do you mean? Well, I was just talking to Jacoby about the movies. What's the jump off? Now look, there's this guy who can get out of it. Where? How do we get from there? The grass. Well, that's just the whole point. Jacoby's been out there for a couple of times. a couple of cops. She's going to do a I'll tell you what he could have done. Now look, he could have jumped over to this room. That's only about four feet. Yeah, he could have done that all right. Aw, oh, give it a rest. I'm pretending there ain't no world, Williams. And that's why I'm telling you guys, I don't think this guy Williams is anywhere that could have been for I got a stinking hunch. He's right in this Hanging around like a duck in a shooting gallery, I suppose. You're a lot of bright guys. It'll be easy once we got in this room. Hey, Sherlock Holmes, what correspondence school did you graduate from? What's the matter with that? He could have come down in the rain pipe and pointed at any one of these windows in this side. Yeah, yeah well, is the story's gonna walk right in the window? The masterminds at work. Why don't you guys go home? He'll probably call on you. Oh, oh he'll be. But you were going in New York. What's she doing in my chair? Is that the only place you can sit? That's my property. I don't want anybody else using it. Nobody's using it, Rose. Everything's all right. Have any of you fellas got some masks? I know, sweetheart, but I got some nice cyanide. <laughs> uh, cut the kidding, fellas. I tell you, I'm sick. Hey, oh, how about a good trust? <laughs> I'll sell it to you. <laughs> What's the matter, Rosie? Off your feet? If I haven't got a good case of grief coming, I miss my guess. <laughs> Get out of the way, Uh, I hope you didn't catch it off me. Oh, I caught it off somebody. Everybody using my phone all the time. So one way, <clears throat> something worse. Now look out, I gotta get my... Wait a minute! Oh! What's the matter? Oh! I don't know. Oh, <laughs> don't you feel all right? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't do that! Don't do what? <laughs> What's the matter? I got a pain here and a rash all over my chest. Oh, you probably get some kind of disease. Sure. He's got the bazooza. <laughs> He's got a fever. Hey, hey, cut it out. It might be diphtheria. I woke up this morning. I had yellow spots all over my stomach. Oh, no, no. This ain't funny. Oh, for God's sake. Rosie, can't you see? She's getting you. Oh, oh there's no so worse than a bear. Oh, oh you might have something to take. Supposing he is in the building. 
They'll grab all the reward and you guys won't get a smell. That's right, yeah. Listen, each of us take a floor and whoever finds them will... No, 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 listen, mother. Don't you mother me. If you have anything to say for yourself, you come downstairs and say it to Peggy. Mother, you go down and tell Peggy I'll be No, alone. sir, I don't move out of here without you. But, Mother, you don't understand. No, I told Peggy. I know what you told her. A lot of gibberish about a murderer. No. But I don't care if you did catch her. You would all be this bad. What did you say? You said you didn't call the Someone will see him. Not if he's inside the desk. We'll carry the desk over. 
Hello, examiner, give me Duffy Cannell. I'd have had him there now if you hadn't given me such an argument. Can't take that out. There's crime with cops outside. Well, Lauren, out the window with police. Quit stalling. Hildy, grab that machine and stop pounding out a lead, will you? What do you want on it? All the words you got. Where's some paper? Hello? Hello? Can I call the mayor and Emma Bay? Call him a nigger if you want to. What about that time he had his house painted by the fire department? Give him the works. Hello, Duffy? Get set. We got the biggest story in the world. Earl Williams caught by the examiner. Exclusive. Listen, Duffy. Send down word to Butch McGurk. I'll be ten huskies from the circulation department. I'll land right over here. Press room, criminal court building. That's what I said, Butch McGurk. Now listen, Duff, I want you to tear out the whole of the front page. Johnson's writing the lead now. Hildy! What the hell do you want? Hildy! What? Listen, Miss, you can't come in here. The hell with the Chinese earthquake. Listen, darling. Where's my mother? I don't care if there's a million dead. Peggy, I gotta ask you to do something. A, a big favor. You're not coming. Now, don't get so...